Hi, my name's Jill Roberts and I'm the Vosca um, advocate on the Older People's Partnership Board for Bristol. Uh, we had a meeting on the 15th of December just last week and uh, I'm here to tell you about some of the, the key things that, that, got, um, that got discussed in the meeting. So um, we started off um, with a presentation from um, Mike Lawler on the improvement project for Castle Park in the centre of Bristol. Um, uh, that was really interesting to hear about. Um, and the public consultation is um, open until the 24th of December. So uh, if, the, if you watch this before the 24th of December, there is still time to go online. Um, if you go to bristol.gov.uk, Castle Park survey, uh, you, can, you can put in your, your comments. There was some really interesting discussion about it and people, had, people at the meeting had quite a bit to say about um, addressing issues for people with disabilities, anybody with, with mo mobility issues, um, thinking about toilets, seating was, was a big one. And also um, people felt very strongly that spaces should be um, all age spaces. You know, people don't want to see the kids' playground over in one place and, you know, something for older people somewhere else. People want an intergenerational community space. Uh, so, uh, so that consultation on the improvements there um, is, uh, is open until the 24th of December. Um, we had a presentation from Sally Robinson, who's the Programme Manager for Partnerships um, at the Council, on the Bristol Clinical Commissioning Group. Uh, she told us um, about um, developments on that and the way that um, dementia services across the city have been moved, the focus has been moved out of um, uh, acute settings and hospital settings and it's now based around GP practices so much more locally based and hopefully much more responsive that way and she told us that um, Bristol's dementia wellbeing service is now being held up as a, a model of good practice so it's fantastic to know that Bristol's leading the way in that way um, uh, and she also told us, as, as well as telling us a, a little bit about how it works, I mean, there are 24 dementia navigators across um, a Bristol now, which is for people, once they've kind of um, uh, been diagnosed, then everybody is assigned um, a dementia navigator to, um, to help signpost them to services and, and put them in touch um, with, with things that they need or want to do. Um, there's, um, there's going to be some action planning around work with carers um, early in 2016 and, um, and they're also setting up a frailty forum in 2016 and there'll be a kind of summit event around that and that was something that people felt very, very strongly that, you know, services just aren't joined up enough. Um, for frail older people and that's something that really, really needs to change and really needs to happen. Um, Sally Robinson is going to be attending future um, meetings of the Older People's Partnership Board so that's, that's really good, you know, we'll, we'll all be able to stay in touch with each other and, and, and feedback on developments and issues. Um, we also had um, an update on Bristol Ageing Better from um, the Programme Director, Adam Rees, who will also be now attending the meetings regularly, which is fantastic. Um, Adam told us that um, the first uh, community development contracts have just been signed. Um, there are group work and peer support projects um, coming online, seven of those starting up in the new year. And there'll be more opportunities um, for community projects and, and to apply for funds from the programme um, coming up in, in February, particularly um, a fund called the Community Chest, which is kind of um, aimed at kick-starting with, with small amounts of, of money. Um, and there's going to be a key focus on um, working with um, older people from BME groups, um, working uh, around dementia and also um, on LGBT issues as well. And of course the prime issue is, is tackling isolation and, and loneliness. Uh, we had a report back from um, 
uh, people attending the board who had attended the Age Friendly City Conference in October, which is a fantastic success. Um, we heard back from, um, from some of the groups, the topic groups that had been, been covered, um, and we had a really fantastic um, visual uh, on the things that came out of the, uh, the conference. Um, but the key ones were employability for 55-year-olds and over. Um, there was quite a lot of debate around outsourcing of services, some, some strong feelings about you know, the, the advantages and disadvantages of that, um, and communications for older people who don't use the internet. Um, we had quite a lot of discussion around that as well. Outdoor spaces I've already mentioned um, in the context of Castle Park, and it was the sim similar sorts of issues, sitting, uh, seating, cafes, um, and, and shared spaces. Um, and transport, a huge one, just a huge one. Um, uh, yeah, some very strong opinions aired there, and, and still quite a bit of frustration um, for people around that. So just to finish up with, we also heard that um, Bristol Aging Better had been um, uh, to, invited to the first Silver Line conference um, uh, towards the end of this year. We also um, heard that, uh, we, we heard back on some of the key things coming out of the autumn statement. Um, to be honest, not sounding good, not sounding good. Um, a real risk of cuts to um, uh, adult care services over the next five years, really, in, in, in the light of that autumn statement. Um, I had to leave just before the end of the meeting, um, but um, uh, those, were the, those were the key points of the meeting. I just left before uh, any other business. Um, there is also a, a consult consultation still continuing um, around adult so social care. I think that closes on the 7th of January. So again, check out the website, um, the Bristol City Council website on that. And the next Older People's Partnership Board is meeting on the 22nd of March. So look out for my report back from that.